from the Alex Trebek stage at Sony Picture Studios, this is Inside Jeopardy! Hello and welcome back to Inside Jeopardy, your exclusive and official podcast destination for all things happening in the world of Jeopardy. I'm Sarah Foss and joining me today, he's back, it's Buzzy Cohen. Welcome me back yeah. to the pod. I've missed you. Well, and I always forget <laughs> until you're sitting right beside me just how much volume is in your hair. Like, how much product does that There's take? There's none in my hair wow. today. This is actually like, because I'm kind of burying the lead here, but we did... I did have some hair and makeup yesterday. Yes, you did. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But I like to give my hair a day off after it gets like heavily producted. So this is just that's amazing. This is the just amount buzzy of a Ella. teasing comb and Nothing. some volumizing mousse. I would need to get that kind of. Imagine if height. I did that. Well, let's get into Jeopardy. Enough about me. I'm happy to yeah. be back though. Everyone who's missed enough my about voice. You, but I want to talk about Emma Stone. <sighs> so of course we cannot reveal if Emma Stone takes the test with the name Emma Stone or what name she uses or in fact what score she does or does not receive. <laughs> but my favorite is that Masters champion James Holtzauer, he was right in on this. You know, he said, Always. I know she doesn't want to go on Celebrity Jeopardy because the competition there is beneath her. As someone who shared the stage with Matt Amodio, I sympathize. Brutal. And then Matt, Brutal. right back at it, James Holtzauer is also unimpressed by Emma Stone playing someone with a child's brain in an adult body in Poor Things film as he does this every day and nobody <laughs> gives him a Golden Globe for it. Not yet. There's Not time. Yet. There's time, but I just, you know, this yes. camaraderie, it's always so fun. You know, yes. we never know where it's going to come from, what's going to spark a fun comment from James. And apparently Matt, I didn't even know Matt was this this good at the comebacks he's, to James. Yeah, he's, he's quippy. You know, Emma, if you're listening... Celebrity Jeopardy champions end up in the TOC. That's true. That is one thing that has changed um, in modern day Celebrity Jeopardy times. The Davies era. Yes, because <laughs> as we have heard from Ike Barinholtz, who no sooner did he win Celebrity Jeopardy, he accepted Michael Davies' invitation to compete in the TOC, which he is planning to do. We don't yet know who our new Celebrity Jeopardy champion will be, but we will certainly be you know, asking them the same question. Yeah. So maybe when Emma hears this, maybe she will consider... Celebrity Jeopardy, I don't know. But it's been a busy week. We're actually yeah. right in the middle of, I'm so excited to say this, the last champion's wild card for season 40. As you all know, you've been watching, you've yep. been commenting. You know, we had a bit of a holding pattern, as we're calling it, because of the writer strike. So we carried out some second chance and four champions wild cards. <laughs> yes. The suits, who can forget the suits, yeah. featuring those season 37 and season 38 champions. And now... We're wrapping up our season 39, group two, Champions Wildcard. We're in the middle of it right now. You know, I said to Ken today, okay, it's really for the last time this season, <laughs> you're going to introduce the quarterfinals of Champions Wildcard. And I know people don't even believe me at this point, but it is happening. And I can say so far, competition, once again, not disappointing. And we're just getting that much closer, closer. to the TOC, the yes. next group of tape dates we have are going to be for the TOC, which we Cannot have already wait. said is going to be the largest field in Jeopardy history. I'm so excited. You know how I feel about the TOC. I know. And it's I'm got just, a close, special place in your heart because I was, yeah. you won it. I won it. I hosted it. Yes, I love the TOC. And I was just texting with Alexa this week to make sure I had the dates blocked out so I could attend. And I said, time to dust off. Handy dandy handy notebook. Handy dandy notebook. It's, it's coming, coming. Okay, yep. I can't wait for the commentary. Well, we've got a lot to cover today on the pod. One week ago today, it was Long Nguyen who was crowned champion from our fourth group of second chancers from those season 39 runners-up. And he secured his spot in Champions Wildcard. Then, of course, we kicked off Champions Wildcard for our first group of competitors, including the first two play-in games, which we've never done before, hosted by the man right beside me, Buzzy Cohen. I did it. So we're going to talk about those. Plus, we're going to highlight the last Celebrity Jeopardy semifinal, Mo Rocca securing that last mm. spot in the finals after quite an exciting game against Heather McMahon and Rachel Dratch. But before we dive in, it's time to take a quick look back at this week in Jeopardy history. Ron Talsma played well, found the Daily Double when he needed it. Did you come up with the right country? What is Bangladesh? It's a tough one, and that is correct. You will add $12,000, 29,600. You now have a narrow 
$2,000 lead over our champion, Amy Schneider. Did she come up with Bangladesh? You looked at this for a long time. No response. You're going to lose $8,000. You're going to finish in second place with 19,600. Roan Talsma, you are our new Jeopardy champion <laughs> with a one day total of $29,600. Congratulations to you. Amy Schneider, congratulations. What a run. Thank you for the two months you spent with us. It was very special. It was remarkable. We'll be seeing you again in the Tournament of Champions. Yeah, January 26, 2022, Roan Talsma defeated super champion Amy Schneider. Amy carried the lead throughout the game. There was no way of knowing that this would be the end of her impressive run. But Roan put up a fight, ending double jeopardy, only $10,000 behind Amy. So it all came down to final. Roan, the only player to come up with the correct response. And after a two-month run, Amy left us as a 40-game champion and... Unfortunately, Roan was actually defeated the following day, but he did return recently to compete in the Champions Wildcard Hearts group. He wasn't able to pull off a win in that game, but he did take home another $5,000, and we always love a chance to welcome Roan back to the Alex Trebek stage. Amy, of course, came back for the Tournament of Champions, which she won. Then she came back for Jeopardy! Masters, and we will be seeing her very soon on the Alex Trebek stage for the all-new Jeopardy! Invitational Tournament, the JIT that's coming up right after TOC. I know people say, wait, no more tournaments. But you're going to get to see some of the greatest in recent and even some more distant Jeopardy history competing for a spot in Masters. And this is for all those people who said, yeah. hey, Masters is just the recent best people yeah. from the TOC. Well, guess what? Now we're going to really put some of these other players through their paces and see who's going to earn that spot in Masters. So, whew. Yeah, I can't believe that was two years ago. It feels like only yesterday that we saw Roan's amazing glasses and uh, his award-winning, his Jeopardy Honors it's winning true. reaction, reaction to yes. his win. I mean, I think anyone who defeats a 40-game champion is going to have a pretty great reaction on the stage, but yeah. his was so great that he did, in fact, win a Jeopardy Honors award. All right, well, we're going to get into the highlights now. We closed out the second chance finals on Monday with Rotimu, Kukoi, Long Nguyen, and Roy Kamara. Roy started off strong, attempting to come back from a big day one deficit in the finals, ending the Jeopardy round just under 10,000. Then in double Jeopardy, he found the first daily double. He went all in, but he was unable to come up with the correct response. Long then responded correctly to the last two daily doubles and really bolstered his lead, ending the round with an effective two-day runaway. Final Jeopardy was a triple stumper, but it didn't matter at that point. Long had secured his spot in Champions Wildcard. Yeah, congrats. Well played, Long. Way to stay in there even when, you know, maybe you feel like the momentum is shifting one way or the other. You just got to stay in the game and find your spots, and that's exactly what Long did. Yes, and both Long and Roy played against Stephen Webb in their, you know, original appearances, so they had something in common there, uh. and Ken also congratulated Rotimi on his performance. Rotimi even talked about in his interview that he was the University of North Carolina's bachelor <laughs> of the campus in 2023, and Ken joked, you know, maybe you won't be the bachelor of the year for long, Rotimi. There's a lot of people there, watching yeah. Jeopardy. It could work. <laughs> there have been romances we, formed. We talked about it on the on the pod. You did, on the This is Jeopardy pod. Yeah. Like, relationships have been formed. People have seen other... Eddie Tamanis' wife saw him Absolutely. years ago, and yeah. they are happily married, so... Who knows? I feel Rotimi, like, if it works out, please get in touch with us. We I feel like know. twice a year there's got to be a New York Times vows of mm -hmm. Jeopardy contestant wedding. Mm -hmm. So, Rotimi, maybe this is your year. Well, in the meantime, I had the chance to catch up with Long right after his win. Let's take a listen. Long Nguyen, you are now a multi-game Jeopardy champion, and you're headed to the Champions Wild Card competition. How are you feeling? Relieved. I feel, feel like just a load off my back, but... Now I have to come back in a month, and I feel the low building again. <laughs> so let's try to do it again in a month. Ho hopefully, uh, I'll be better prepared. The buzzers are kind of tough to get used to, but I, I think I'll do better next time, hopefully. Yeah, I noticed you had many, many attempts, but you weren't as efficient with getting in on the buzzer. So certainly something you were aware of during your gameplay? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was ringing in on practically yeah. every question, but fortunately, I got the ones I wanted to get, and... Unfortunately for Roy, he, he missed those daily doubles, which cost him, obviously. Well, you know all about missing big daily doubles. Yeah. Of course, that's what cost you a first win in your mm -hmm. initial appearance against Stephen Webb, a six-game champion mm -hmm. at that point. 
Have you thought about that wager? And when you think about it, do you still say, I did what I would do if I had it to do again? I would still do it. I mean, it's the right wager at that point of time. And I know what the Monroe Doctrine is. I know what that is. <laughs> I just couldn't think of it, but I would do it again, absolutely. Well, ever since we announced Second Chance, your name has always been one that has come up in the conversation because people really admired that you were willing to, to go all in in uh -huh. a moment like that, to put it on the line. Uh -huh. And here it proved to be the difference between you going home not a winner and heading to Champions Wild Card. Well, like, you know, like they say in Vegas, you play to win. If you're confident, you just go for it, you know, just play to win. I remember you once told a story about a little bar trivia. You know, the only time you didn't win, you looked down and there was James Holzhauer playing on a team against you. Uh -huh. What do you think he would think about you now, Long? You're certainly taking some Holzhauerian moves in your gameplay. Well, I, I think he would appreciate it. I mean, I, I kind of know him from Vegas. I've seen him around town. I, I think he would tell me, yeah, good, good job, young man. <laughs> What do you do now? You have Champions Wild Card. You know you're going to be facing other great champions and second chance winners. How do you gear up to come back and compete at that next level? A uh, lot of practice, studying. Yeah, it's underrated. And then, you know, after I'm all done with all this, I got to go back to playing pickleball. A lot of the people at the court are asking about me, and I just, I just have to tell them, I, uh, I can't do it this month. There's a reason, and you'll find out soon. <laughs> now they're going to have to wait even longer to yes. find out, right? Yeah, even longer, yes. What's the best part of the experience so far? Oh, it's just meeting people, just being on the stage. My brother's here with his son. The first time around, I thought I performed so bad. I, I want a chance for redemption, and that's, I think that's what happened. All right. Well, you certainly have redemption today. We look forward to seeing you in Champions Wild Card. Congratulations, Long. Thank you. I tell you what, that Vegas style, it's something. There's just like ice in their veins when yes. it comes to these big wagers. And apparently uh, pickleball is also in Long's uh, back pocket. All right. I don't want to share my controversial take on pickleball on the pod, but I'm excited to see Long continue because he's got what it takes. Yeah. He's not a long shot. All right. So that's okay, but the hearts will go on is not. You're right, Buzzy. You know, I make fun of your the heart will go on. And here I am throwing out long shot two weeks in a row. Yeah. I love. You know what? I love a pun. I just want to know. It's fine. You know what, Sarah? You can do no wrong in my book. Oh, Keep sure being can. you. I sure can. All right. Well, on <laughs> Tuesday, we kicked off Champions Wild Card featuring season 39 winners. First up, Sharon Stone, Katie Palumbo, and Andy Terrell. I have to say, it's Andy Terrell. I think for an entire season, I called him Andy Terrell. So, mm. Andy, if you're listening, I Apologies. am sorry. I learned the correct pronunciation, and you will be Andy Terrell from here on out. Andy and Katie battled throughout the Jeopardy round, with Andy taking a small lead into Double Jeopardy. He continued to strengthen on that lead with the help of a $5,000 daily double, but then Katie attempted to stay in contention. Unfortunately, she did not make it to Final Jeopardy, and Sharon was unable to get within half of Andy's score, so he cruises into a runaway and the first spot in the semifinals. Highlight for this game for yeah. Ken Jennings... 1980s pro wrestling you know he answers some great audience yes. questions and oftentimes you know people say hey what's your favorite category and he goes i can't get enough of 1980s pro wrestling well our writers are always listening and sure enough they presented the category he did in fact say it was his dream category and he did a great hulk hogan better get ready brother brother yeah, yeah. It was yeah. good. And then with Macho Man, he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he just, yeah. he brought them all. It was fun. I think yeah. we should just, uh, you and I should start calling each other brother, like in the Hulk Hogan voice, see what happens. Okay, brother, moving on to Wednesday's <laughs> quarterfinal with Devin Lohman, Javeria Zahir, and Patty Palmer. Javeria coming off her second chance victory and putting on another dominant performance. 30 correct responses, including all three daily doubles. And she ended the double Jeopardy round with over $30,000 and a no doubt runaway win. After this game, one of my favorite tweets I saw from Jeopardy champion Jesse Matheny, Queen Juveria, first of her name, mother <laughs> of daily doubles and breaker of second chances. Yes, it is definitely, If in the Game of Thrones, I think Juveria is really turning some heads here on the Jeopardy stage. Look, 30 correct responses, as you mentioned, all three daily doubles and the only one to get final. Javeria is out for blood. She, I, I, I see her going really far. Well, and Patty Palmer, who is as sweet as they come, she joked when she saw Javeria that morning, she thought, oh, no. 
but then said, you know, she actually couldn't be happier because not only is Juveria brilliant, she is the nicest person. And then you talk to Juveria, you know, when asked about these big daily double wagers, she said, well, you know, it worked out last time, so I was hoping it would work out this time. Eventually, my luck will run out, but it wasn't today. I will take it. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it so many times that when you're confident, if you can make those big wagers, that's how you lock up games. Yeah. And when she told us earlier, you know, I want to teach my daughters not yeah. to be scared. Yeah. Don't be afraid. So she's really playing that way in her game. I love it. Moving on to Thursday with Martha Bath, Kendra Westerhouse, and Nick Berry. This was a close game throughout with Martha taking the lead into double jeopardy. Nick tried to chip away at her lead, but he missed two big daily doubles, the last of which he went all in on. It was the right move, but with just six clues left in the round, it effectively took him out of contention. Meanwhile, Kendra was able to build up her score to exactly half of Martha's, adding the possibility for a tie. Yeah. But final jeopardy was a triple stumper as Kendra went all in and Martha had a savvy $0 wager. Martha secures another Jeopardy win. Martha, our Art Fleming era champion, continues her reign of terror decades and decades through swaths of Jeopardy contestants. I also just want to point out that, yes, Nick had a tough break. You flip those two daily doubles at those same wagers. Mm -hmm. Nick's got a runaway. So a well-played game. Daily doubles, I think he played them right. I know he didn't win, but I think he played them right. Well, and let's just point out that in the game you hosted, Nick Berry was, in fact, the champion, and he did have a runaway in that game. That's right. But he played very well against two other champions. Sometimes you eat the bear, sometimes the bear eats you. Yeah, we've talked about it. If you want to catch those games on Jeopardy Radio on TuneIn, they are available on demand. If you want to hear Buzzy, you won't see him, but you can hear him just like you do here on the pod. Yeah, and I actually, you know, I I don't think I'm giving anything away that we taped our third play-in game yesterday. And I realized that after approximately between 17 and 1800 tape days, uh, we've only had three days where two different people hosted on the Alex Trebek stage. One of them was yesterday. The other one was the day that we taped Nick Berry's playing game. And the third one... Dun, 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 April Fool's Day! The April Fool's Pat Day Sajak. when Pat came and hosted Just one Just for game. one show. Yeah. yeah, they swapped spots. So, so that's cool trivia. Yeah, a little bit of trivia for you the really trivia You really are a part there. of Jeopardy history. Apparently I am now. In more ways than one. All right, well, we closed out the week with Brian White, Aaron Portman, and Rachel Clark. Aaron got off to a hot start with Rachel falling close behind. They battled it out in double Jeopardy while Brian worked his way up from third place. He was then able to take a small lead heading into final after Aaron missed a big $5,000 daily double. But it was Aaron who came up with the correct response to advance to the semifinals. I was just excited that she was advancing because I thought maybe we would get to see the question mark exclamation point earrings that Aaron wore in her original run. And this game featured another play-in game winner who also had a runaway, and that is Rachel Clark. Yeah, I got to say, this is a great game. I love tight scores going into final. Very evenly matched if we look at correct percentage right in those, you know, mid-80s. Really fun to watch. And um, the one question I have for Aaron, uh, if you're out there listening, I'm curious about that wager. Mm -hmm. Because second place is a tricky, tricky spot to wager from you got to be thinking about especially in a close game like this third place you got to be thinking if everyone gets it wrong then you have an opportunity to take the game from first place so Aaron if you're out there hit me on my beeper and let me know about that strategy I just love love learning more yeah Rachel Rachel played a great playing game she was really dialed in and you can see she she played another great game got final just you know didn't go her way and now a quick word from our sponsor selling a little or a lot? <laughs> Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person point of sale system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Plus, they have the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. What I love about Shopify is how simple they've made it to grow your business. You can manage inventory, track payments, and view real-time insights all in one place. Shopify is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow 
grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash jeopardy, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash jeopardy now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash jeopardy. Now back to Inside Jeopardy. Well, we're going to head into a new week of Champions Wild Card tonight, but on Tuesday night last week in primetime, we saw our last Celebrity Jeopardy semifinal matchup, Rachel Dratch, Mo Rocca, Heather McMahon. Rachel, I mean, right off the bat, she runs two categories Jesus. back to back, Dr. Seuss and Espanol and Spelling Biz. It looked like she was just going to play the whole game by herself, forming a strong early lead, and she just continued to build on that lead throughout Double Jeopardy. But then Mo was right on her tail. Mo stepped on the gas in Triple Jeopardy. This really is the great equalizer in Jeopardy, this yeah. extra round with 30 extra clues. And on the strength of 14 correct responses in that round, including all three of the daily doubles, Mo actually takes the lead over Rachel heading into final. Mo and Rachel both able to come up with the correct response. So Mo was able to protect his lead for the win and gets that last spot in the finals. We came really close to having an all-female final mm. because this could have easily gone Rachel's way. It's just Mo really found his rhythm in Triple Jeopardy. Yeah, when I think about Celebrity Jeopardy, who the kinds of people that are poised to do well, Mo Rocca is basically the center of that circle. You know, he does CBS Sunday Morning. He was a, a Daily Show correspondent. He does Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. He's very smart. He's very fast. He's very informed. You know, Rachel obviously... <laughs> also incredibly smart, fast, and informed, but I'm not surprised to see Mo Rocca advancing a very well-played game. Yeah, and Heather, also a good competitor, but really gave me her favorite moment in Final Jeopardy when she said, who can get me some wine? <laughs> and I can imagine after 91 clues against Rachel and Mo, it would be wine time for me by the end, too. Yeah. All right, well, there you have it. Mo Rocca will be joining Lisa and Walter and Katie Nolan in the Celebrity Jeopardy finals. I had the chance to catch up with Mo right after his win. Let's take a listen. Mo Rocca, you're headed to the finals. How does that feel? You know, I'm genuinely very excited. This is so much fun and I have to say, it's even more fun when you win. So it's, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, the first time you played Celebrity Jeopardy, John Berman got John, the best of who, you. Who I should say, by sheer coincidence, was an old friend of mine. But yeah, it hurt to lose. Yeah, being a winner is way more fun. Yeah. Yeah. You've now had the chance to be declared a champion twice. Right. How does it compare? First game, semifinal win, is, is the first time the sweetest? Or was this time, you know, making it to the finals the best? The semifinal was, was more high pressure, sure. And also I was behind. I mean, Rachel, who I've also worked with on stage, was on a tear. And when she's on a tear, there's no stopping her. Yeah, but then you come into Triple Jeopardy, you get all three daily doubles. Sure, and that, <laughs> that, was, helps. that was serendipity. Yeah, and you get them correct, which helps yeah. even more. Yeah. Now, what are you gonna do heading into the finals? You've now, you know, you've got two wins under your belt. You know who your competition is, Lisa and Walter and Katie Nolan. What do you do in the weeks leading up to that game? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch a lot. And mm -hmm. I really mean that because I find that stretching really relaxes me. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll do a big load of laundry, then I'll spill it out onto the living room floor. And oftentimes it's at the hour in New York when Jeopardy is on. And so then I can fold and that I can really get a good stretch and I'm really a meticulous folder and ultimately it will relax me. I will also try to sleep a lot because I think that's important for response time. And I don't know that I buy this whole brain food thing, but I do like blueberries and salmon, so I might as well. I actually prefer cherries. I don't know if those count. Mm, I don't think it's quite the same antioxidants. Yeah. But you know, if you like yeah. the taste. Yeah. A lot of our great champions stretch even while they're here on the stage. I don't know if you know that. So commercial breaks, often like a James Holtzhauer is, getting his calves loosened up. Yeah, I mean, I think I was sort of swaying side to side. You know, the jeans I'm wearing are pretty tight. Mm. And so I really couldn't, I, there was no way I was really gonna be able to squat. But I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep Spandex that in mind. for the finals? Yeah, just to, uh, maybe. I'll, to wear more comfortable pants for the finals. All right. Well, but you... then again, maybe the tightness of the pants did something and made me more alert. Right, you don't wanna jinx it. Maybe stick with what you I have. really don't wanna jinx it. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say has been the best part of your Jeopardy experience so far? 
I think um, uh, lyrics from musicals. <laughs> I mean, I just am so happy to know that those thousands of hours listening to original Broadway cast albums, um, which gave me untold pleasure throughout my life, also has helped this charity. And what about Julius Caesar? You know, after I got that <laughs> question wrong, um, I went to see a production of Julius Caesar in the park. And I think I fell asleep. I have this thing like I just <laughs> fall asleep in everything, but I will not fall asleep in this. All right, well, we wish you good stretching, good studying, good healthy eating until the finals, and we'll see you then. Thank you so much. And if you have any laundry you want me to fold, just give me a ring. I love it. Congrats. Thanks. I really um, identified with Mo feeling a little higher pressure. You know, the first time you come on the Jeopardy stage, it's like fun and exciting. And then you're mm -hmm. like, oh, wait, I won. Now everyone expects me to win. Well, and I think even just as someone who had played Celebrity Jeopardy before. Right. People are like, oh, you've done this. This is old hat. You should know how the buzzer works. So, you know, he's got that. And then he also has a victory in the quarterfinals. So, yeah, the pressure was on and he... He rose to the occasion. And I got to say, between Mo, Lisa, Ann, and Katie, this is going to be a great final. As listeners know, I have no idea what's going on in anything. And so I'm very <laughs> excited to see who wins this final. This is going to be one for the ages. I can't wait. Yeah, tomorrow night on ABC in primetime at 8 p.m., we will find out who is taking home $1 million for charity. And then, of course, we'll have them on the pod to find yes. out if they're going to accept our invitation to the TOC. Okay, it's now time for this week's host chat. An audience member asked Ken, would you ever write the Senior Genius Guides? So I wrote some children's books of amazing facts called the Junior Genius Guides. And you want the Senior Genius Guides? <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, yeah, I've never, I've never thought about this. A fun section of the, of the uh, library just for senior citizens. It would have large print. <laughs> it would be a lot about like World War II and the Founding Fathers, I guess. I, I don't know. Somebody tell me what the boomers want to read about. I will write it. So fun story about his junior genius guides. You know, my daughter has known about Ken her whole life, yeah. my older daughter. And last year when she was in fourth grade, she came home. She's like, Mom, we read one of Ken Jennings' books today. And no I told way. everyone that I know him. And I said that I could probably get him to come to our school. So what do you think, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is something I would have done as right? a kid, like, like volunteer. She just assumed, like, hey, Mom, he's your buddy. Like, he'll come to my fourth grade class for a talk, right? I never did ask Ken. I'm you sure he would have. He would have come. But well, you know, we know Ken is an avid listener of this pod, yes. so he'll be he'll be yeah, responding. Yeah, she's in shortly. fifth grade now. Maybe we'll save it for sixth grade. You know. Yeah, that feels right. Ken Jennings' appearance at yeah. the school. Well, that's it for today's show. We'll be back next week to highlight the remaining Champions Wildcard quarterfinal games. And of course, we're going to be discussing that Celebrity Jeopardy final and speaking with the champion right here on the pod. You won't want to miss it, so be sure to tune in for that tomorrow night and join us right back here on Monday. We'll see you next week. See you then.
For more great Jeopardy videos, hit the subscribe button below.